One minute to air, Mr. Leduff. Mr. Leduff. Your beer, Mr. Leduff. Your robe, Mr. Leduff. Oh shit. The power went out again. Live from downtown Detroit, it's No PS News Hour with my main man, Spawny! Na 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 The bullshit! Just a breaking of double or bullshit. Double or bullshit. What's up, Karen? I don't know, Charlie. How you doing? Hi, Jasmine Barmore from the Free Press. How are you? How are you? Is she up? You got her mic? Yeah. Good. Checking. Check, check. Sorry. Just... Hi, Jazz. You all right? I'm good. How are you? You've been beating the streets. Yeah, I've been out here. Power's out. We'll get to that. Oh, this is a mess. But first, I want to offer this open letter to the Lansing Police Department's Public Information Officer, subject matter, MSU's mass shooting. Madam, I'm confused. We spoke last week, my question was clear and you seem to understand it. What were the circumstances surrounding the Lansing Police Department's welfare check to the gunman's house just eight days before his rampage on the campus of Michigan State University? A few days after the tragedy, Lansing Chief of Police Ellery Sosby made a statement to reporters, quote, I'd like to clear up a few topics of misinformation, he said. LPD has not responded to any welfare checks for Anthony McRae. There was a check at the address on Howe Street on February 5th, but was not related to the accused. And the LPD has not been called in any way to shots fired at this address. Well, madam... The chief's statement clouds the issue rather than clarifies it. If the Lansing police responded to the home of a mass murderer just a week and a day before his shooting storm, what were the circumstances of that call? Who specifically were the police checking on? Who called the police? What was the outcome of the investigation? What was said in the officer's written reports? You said to me, nobody's asked those questions. And I apologized. I was not at the press conference, I told you. So I'm asking you now. I'll get on it, you promised. We also discussed the fact that the chief's statement to the press was in direct contradiction to accounts given by McRae's neighbors, who told numerous media outlets that the police were in fact called or were in the vicinity of the home on more than one occasion while McRae was firing his gun in the backyard. A neighbor living directly behind McRae has said this, so has the neighbor living across the street. Even McRae's father told the press he pleaded with his son to get rid of the weapon. While police may not have responded specifically to a shots fire call, are there any reports from the past two years where officers documented the neighbor's complaints or McRae's behavior? There may be a simple explanation to these conflicting narratives, but as you must certainly understand, the community, the families, and the students desire clarification. The horrors of mass shootings seem to follow a script now. Press conference, calls for stricter gun laws, calls for more mental health services, then funerals attended by politicians who get none of these things accomplished. A clear airing and thorough understanding of McRae's interactions with law enforcement may help us arrive at an attainable strategy to provide more effective policing of troubled individuals. 
This is particularly important in the Lansing metropolitan area, home to the state government and the largest college campus in Michigan. Meanwhile, Lansing proper finds itself tagged with the unwanted sobriquet of top 20 most violent cities in America. Madam, I followed up our telephone conversation with a written request. After hearing nothing from you throughout the week, I sent you an official Freedom of Information request. Your response was dismissive and disturbing to say the least. I apologize for the delay you wrote. To fill out a FOIA request, click here. Madam, that's not good enough. Pursuant to MCL 15.232 subsection M, a written request for information shall include any writing transmitted by fax, email, or other electronic means. As a result, I am not required to fill out the city's form, and I shan't. By statute, you have five business days to respond to my email, which is this Friday. Then you are entitled to 10 business days thereafter to fulfill my request in full. Moreover, Pursuant to MCL 15.234, subsection 2, I ask that any fees or charges be waived as this is a matter of high public interest. Further still, if you believe my request would benefit from an unscripted, unrehearsed, sit-down interview with Chief Sosby, I am amenable to that. Regards, Charlie LaDuff. Translation. Shit, is you crazy? You know this some bullshit. I'm not filling this out. And you only got a few days to get back to me. And I'd be damned if I pay for any of it. Deuces. Word. <laughs> this message of uplift is brought to you by business and personal wealth advisor Luke Nowacki, who reminds you that what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but never enter the kingdom of God? But while you're waiting, Nowacki wants you to remember that overreaction is not a sound financial strategy. So call Luke Nowacki at 248-663-4748 for sound financial advice. Hi, I'm David Hall from Hall Financial. The top rated realtors in Michigan have said that our five-star certified pre-approval is a game changer to the home buying process. Hall Financial's focus on speed and client service allows you to take on the housing market and win. When you're ready to purchase your new home, you need to make Hall Financial your first call. The mortgage company realtors trust and buyers love. 866-CALL-HALL or chat with us at callhallfirst.com. With us uh, is Jasmine Barmore, a reporter for the Free Press, uh, been covering the unbelievably ridiculous power outage that's infected Michigan, you know, like every fucking week. What, what do you find out? Where are we at now? So according to DTE, they said that they have restored 600,000 of the 630,000 customers impacted by the power outage and that they are still working tired. Well, they have workers that are still working as we speak, trying to restore the uh, other residents who have been affected. So respect to the line workers. Everybody knows mm -hmm. that. What a dangerous job. And, right. you know, we we. Because it's raining. Oh, oh yeah. Is it going to freeze? It's, it's raining freezing. bad right yeah. now. Holy it's, it's, fuck. It's, it's, it's freezing rain. They said that it was going to be another ice storm today. So let's get real here. What's what, First of all, DTE, you're bullshit, man. You guys, this isn't you. This isn't the free press. This isn't you. This is me. You belong in prison. You do. People are dying. My mother didn't have power for two days. I didn't even know it. You know, my mom. You, everybody know my mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wrote her a letter last week. She didn't return my call. Finally, two days later, she returned my call. I go, uh, she goes, I, my power just came back. And I go, mom, why didn't you call? She said, I don't know if she's getting senile mm -hmm. or nostalgic, but she's like, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> she was just thugging it out. She, she likes, my mother like makes lye soap. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Beef barley stew, like her own candles. But, 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 but she's from a different era too. She <laughs> thinks she's from Little House she's on the Prairie. She does. <laughs> you know, like she tells stories about her great grandmother and they would um her her aunt they would cut up uh flannel shirts and wipe their ass with them put them in a pot and then wash them that was the old days uh, before toilet paper okay. she yeah. looked at hey. that finally so, so this was like a camp out for my mom but i don't like it <laughs> my brother in that power his grand boy right 
He's moving them around to different residences to keep them warm. Yeah, but Charlie, we've seen where I, I've seen on Twitter and social media where uh, parents whose children are oxygen dependent <clears throat> or whether they have you know special needs, people are saying, okay, why should you have to pack up and go to a warming center? Why do you want to stay at a rec yeah. center? What if you cannot find or afford a hotel room? What about generators? That's the shit they're but, doing in the Ukraine, but that's because exactly. Putin's fucking firing missiles at their yeah. electric plants. Well, What's our fucking reasoning? Same so, thing. So DTE said 600, as you're telling me there, of the 630. Well, why is it everybody else was reporting 820,000? Well, I mean, I also have seen that the numbers have been being manipulated. Mm -hmm. So we don't really know how many residents are really affected by the power outages unless we go door to door and knock and find out, you know, and for DTE, they kind of have to go around the same, you know, around the same thing. It, they don't know until they find out, oh, this one is affected. Or what if you were affected like someone that uh, texted me the other day? They didn't lose power on Thursday. They lose. They lost their power on Friday. So what if it's something like that? Mm. So those variables that they may or may not count. But the platforms of reporting are inconsistent, too, um, because DTE, their Twitter account said that um, they were still they were still 30,000 outstanding. Um, their media and their outage center uh, reported 60,000. But the outage map indicated 87,000. So that, that's even, this morning. That's this morning. And so even on their own platforms, they're not consistent. And right. let me put it to you this way. OK, uh, California at the height because they got hit with fucking snow yeah. in L.A. Right. Um, at the height of their outage, it was a big national story. 68,000 customers. So we still got 80. Wait, let's see, Wednesday to Thursday, well, Thursday to Friday, Friday to Saturday, <laughs> Saturday to Sunday. That's five days. And what's going to be the impact of today's weather? That's, That's what I was thinking thing. about. Yeah. What's going to happen to today? coming down outside. Yeah. And so you, what's pour, you pour ladies, you know, very handsome ladies indeed. Your nails handsome are, ladies. Your, 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 your nails are nice, <laughs> right? What happens if it floods? What are you going to do? You're going to have to call Mr. Charlie right here. <laughs> I'll be there. I got Mr. a spare generator. Mr. Charlie. And I, uh, spare generator. I'll be there to help. Okay, I'm gonna remember that, Charlie. Hey, yeah. Red, did you ever get your FEMA check for your basement flooding out? It wasn't enough. Uh, so you got a check. It didn't even cover replacing the washer but and did dryer. You, but did you get a FEMA? Did you get something from Not FEMA? Not from FEMA, or, actually. Did, or did you have to take out an SBA loan? No, no, no SBA loan. Okay. It was a FEMA check, and okay. it didn't cover replacing the washer and dryer. So mm. we know that didn't clean up none of that. Nah, they didn't pay out for none of that. That's crazy. So. Uh, Jasmine, what 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 was the profit of our public utility? What was the profit last year? Oh, that right there. I was just reading that. Like a over a billion. It was like yeah, they I think they said it was about two hundred and fifty six million they they gained in profits last year. Revenue and profits. Yeah, well, yeah, it was about two it was about two 200 and it was about 200 uh, well i'll tell you this you you keep looking up and i'll tell you this yeah let me find it any I like to be exact here's what's going on ladies and gentlemen and if you listen to this program you know any investment that the consumers let's not forget them they've got this place divided up and they got 90 percent of all households any investment they make in new infrastructure like gas fired plant they're guaranteed a profit okay that's the deal you're not guaranteed a profit when you have to upkeep poles, wires, transformers, couplings, um, et cetera, cutting trees. Mm -hmm. So when you have to put back into the system, you do not make profit. The CEO of this bitch is making over $10 million <laughs> and he's getting paid in stock. So when you beat Wall Street's mm -hmm. um, projections, your stock goes up and we sit in the dark but this is the thing charlie and i know people are they, they're upset and they talk about you know oh this guy's making all this money i get all that that's capitalism i don't care how much he makes what i care about is that the service provision is commensurate with the money that i pay for uh, yeah that's it yeah. i don't care about i i understand that's that's an uphill battle in this country i got it but at the end of the day we constantly are you know charged 
astronomical rates and receiving substandard service. I'm trying to connect the dots for you. This is the point. You pay exorbitant rates. Mm -hmm. The profits are outrageous. I, I understand. Right? And the reason they're outrageous is because you. they starve you and overcharge you. Yep. The profits for uh, fourth quarter were over a billion. They were 1.8 billion. For the or, I'm fourth, sorry, they were one point. They were a little bit over one point billion for fourth quarter. For the yeah. fourth quarter, yeah. For the fourth quarter, <laughs> over a billion dollars. We're not even out of the first quarter yet. Well, we're now in the first quarter. Been yeah. the reporting, you know, the last right. quarters now, mm -hmm. over a billion. And you're going to raise my rates. Yes. Now let me give you some thirty. Yeah. Go ahead. It was a thirty. They were approved to raise the rates by thirty point five million um, last year by the Michigan uh, Public Service Commission. It now for infrastructure. DTE did ask for a little bit more, and the service commission came back and said, "No, we'll get, we'll grant you this." That's, that's the, the art of negotiation. But. That's the game. That's the. That's I just a, got finished telling Red. Let's that. go have a glass of Bordeaux and a Delmonico. You heard me say, "But did I know. just tell you that Red asked for more than you want, and uh, then settle for what it is that you that you really want?" They, we just DTE about already that. got it down pat. They they clearly do. Go we ahead, did, Jasmine. What were you saying? I'll give you this, Jazz. Okay. This was from a prior program of ours. The Michigan Public Service Commission, which is supposed to keep an eye on these people, mm -hmm. came out with the report, and I quote it, the reliability is inadequate. Plans for improvements are insufficient. Over 100 times in, the, in this 80-page report, they use the word insufficient, unreliable, unsafe. Wow. It's not there. We're not ready for the future. This electric future is bullshit. There's a New York Times story right here. We can't even, Biden throwing out $400 billion for new energy projects, but there's a four-year backlog once you build this solar farm to tie it into the grid, into our shit grid here. Four-year backlog. So, you know, I don't believe it. I'm going to give you this. Here's what the consumer pays. In Michigan, the average electricity bill for the year is 2000 Two hundred and thirty three dollars. Two thousand two hundred and thirty three dollars. A laborer in Calcutta, India, <laughs> on average, makes one thousand nine hundred and thirty two dollars a year. So why is his fucking power better <laughs> in India, ladies and gentlemen? India is has a renowned, a renowned, terrible grid, mm -hmm. bottom 50 in the world, but 34 percent of all Indian households report no outages for the year, 34%. Hmm. In Michigan, the average resident suffers 15 hours of blackout per year, and that doubled from the prior, prior year. From 2021, it was 15 hours, 2020 it was seven and a half. So, it's not good enough. And remember too, there was just a rate increase that was approved for the hours between 3 and 7 yes. p.m., which is when kids are coming home from school, people are coming home from work, dinner, maybe work before Those bed. Those are peak Those hours. Those are peak hours. And so it's like... It doesn't balance off. And I think what, what <laughs> I've been hearing from consumers is at this point, DTE, what are you going to do to help us? But do they feel helpless? Because people are asking, what do we do? And they don't know what to do. Well, and see, that that's that's what I was having a discussion with about with someone. And see, the thing is, is that we also have to realize that the CEO is not necessarily hearing the problems on the community level that we're having um, when it comes to these power outages and these outrageous budget plans and the bills that people are on. So we have to also remember that for them to hear us, we have to amplify our voices. When they have these public meeting, these meetings um, monthly with the uh, Michigan, uh, the, the service commissioners, mm -hmm. maybe we need to start going. If That's a good to, one. That's you, a good one. You know, maybe one. we need to start going. Where's the fucking governor? Okay, you're the reporter. Has the, Was there a, this is five days now. Was it? You're a reporter. Cracker Jack, they email you. It's going to be a press briefing. Did you? Did the governor hold a emergency press briefing on let the public know what's going on, what they need? Have you been to one of those? Not to my knowledge. Have you heard of I any? I haven't heard. That's interesting, Charlie. I haven't heard the, anything from the governor's office at all on this. Governor, come on. I... Attorney General, put him in prison. You... <laughs> 
I'm I'm uh, I'm sure uh, Jasmine she tweeted something or there's a press release from the Attorney General. Is yeah, there... she is. Oh, oh. <laughs> surprise! Twitter. Yeah, she. Twitter. So she has called on the Michigan Utilities to um, basically give some type of reimbursements for people oh. that have suffered. But outages. that's a reaction. That's, that's 20, not a strategy. That's twenty five bucks. We've yeah. been through this, and that don't even cover all the groceries you lost and eggs. That's cost one of the real issues carton. that customers are complaining about, and because I think we all crazy. know. Yeah. Let's not talk about the price of eggs today. <laughs> you know, you go, you can't leave your eggs or your milk in a refrigerator that has no power because it's going to spoil, and you know, it's people are just kind of getting to a place where it's like, look, we are already struggling as is to maintain. But you know what? Regardless, and this is the thing, even if you're not struggling, everybody deserves to have one what they pay for. If I go to the grocery store and you can go to the store and spend four or five hundred dollars easily. I deserve to be able to take care of those groceries because I have a refrigerator because I pay my electric. That's all I'm asking for. Right. Just, you know, just basic stuff. I don't want any favors. I don't want any preferential treatment. I just want what I pay for. I just want some, look, here's what you could do. We could all, a million of us could decide to go have lunch on the lawn at DTE right over here. And nothing that sweats an executive like a million people having a peaceful lunch on the lawn staring up at you. Because the governor ain't going to do shit. AWOL. Attorney General is just a puppet, just dancing around. Because we're going to get to the nursing homes and all of that. That you refuse to look into because you don't really care. And you blew Flint. Mm -hmm. And you don't really yeah. care. And remember during the election, governor's fixing the damn roads. Do you remember all the barrels, Red? Remember? Every last one of them. All them barrels, man. You had like shit that uh, 75, 696 interchange. Like... I, I didn't know Madison Heights was so nice. I, mean, I didn't know they had them all. I'm like, what the fuck am I? Oh, look, an Applebee's. Okay. Uh, well, the election's over and the barrels are gone. Are the roads fixed? Nope. Nope. Is the power fixed? The, the public is getting played at every uh, level. I mean, we are. And I think, like Jasmine said, people are frustrated and they're, they're disappointed and they're looking for what is it that we do. Ideally, it would be great if every single person refused to pay their electric bill. Right. That, that's how you really get their attention. But they're in control of the switch. And so are you prepared for, you know, the shutoffs? But what do what what do people do like well, how do we, they amplify their voices as you said but we also have to take into account i hear i hear you what you're saying too about you know the governor not saying anything too charlie but we also have to look at this is um these are un these are different times that we're living in we had this power outage right on the heels of the msu shooting and it's but this we isn't the first to, one, though. That's the thing. This isn't the first one. Wait, 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 wait. All right, wait, wait. Okay, so you know what? Uh, the government doesn't talk to it. They don't do anything. If you notice, from all that poison dirt from East Palestine, mm -hmm. Ohio, they're putting it on trucks, trucking it across Ohio, up here, yep. and they're going to dump it in Wayne County? Oh, please. That's don't. the plan. <laughs> That's the plan. And nobody was told. I don't know if nobody the governor was, was told. They, she don't was return told. my call. Nobody was told. Debbie Dingle gets out there, and Cuckoo Caramo's out there, and not in my backyard all of a sudden. Who said they could do it? Why weren't we notified? But if you notice, when our elected representatives stand up, some shit stops. You see? But they don't. So who made that call? Hey, governor, are you so out of touch? That they, Sleepy Joe pulled his right right over your eyes? Because that's really bad not to know. And if you knew, how could you? How could you? But I know what we can do with that. I know we can do with that poison dirt. What? We can give it to Mike Duggan. He can throw in the demo holes here in Detroit. Ain't nobody with, with the rest of it? Yeah. Where, where, was, where was Cuckoo and Debbie? Where is that investigation? That's poison shit in the ground. Yeah, but that wasn't a sexy story. I know. But it's the people. Yeah, it's the it's the neighbor. That's who you. you it's keep like track what Karen of. said. That it's you and you. The 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 people feel like they're getting played. The they people are played. tired. They are, they're, and they're, they're tired. tired. And and it's and, and we can complain, or the people can complain and complain and complain. But now it's time to see some action. We have to start having forward conversations, especially about the power and the issues that we're going to continue seeing since the global warming is not going to slow no, down. No, I, I disagree. I, I appreciate it. Time for talking's done. Yeah. We, we've, been, we've been doing that. 
Because let, let's let's take a look at Ohio. Okay, train goes off the track. Again. And I can tell you why it went off the track, because, you know, for a year I did a documentary. I was on them railroad cars, traveling up and down the coast. But who, I did a lot of reading. Uh, my source would be the Associated Press, which is pretty credible. They've been around a couple of centuries. A little bit. You know, not fake news. <laughs> this thing goes off the track. Mm -hmm. It's got uh, vinyl chloride. Mm. It's not leaking, but one of the five cars is getting hot. Mm. Now, I called my hazmat guy, super firefighter guy, l licensed and trained by, wait for it, Pete Buttigieg, <laughs> the United States Department of Transportation. That's who certifies train wreck response. Mm -hmm. This is part of your wheelhouse. They got water on the hot car, right? They got water on it. That's what you do. You cool it off. They told him to take the hoses off. That's what the local fire chief said. They told us, back off. Remember, they had to let it out because they were afraid it was going to explode and mm -hmm. send shrapnel a mile away. Right. Do you know how they cracked open the cars? How? No. They put explosive devices on it. <laughs> that's, that's according to the Associated Press. Now, that's asinine. Well, that's I, backwards. I, that doesn't make any sense. So they, <laughs> it's going to blow everything up. So they crack them. They let the vinyl chloride go into a ditch. Now you got to clean it up. So what they do? They decided to light on fire. Now, this was just a Google. And so Biden did know because the governor of Pennsylvania said he was in touch with him. So Washington knew. Harrisburg knew. Columbus knew. Right? All the different governmental entities. EPA knew. Department of Transportation. So you lit it on fire. You know what you get when you light vinyl chloride on fire? What you get, Charlie? It's called phosgene. That's the gas. You know how phosgene is popular? You can Google this. Mm -hmm. In World War I, when they were gassing each other, 85% mm -hmm. <laughs> of all the troops in World War I, the war to end all wars, died from phosgene. So, wow. So, what happened in Ohio was a war crime. It was a fucking war crime. That's illegal to gas people with phosgene by the Geneva Convention, and yet somebody thought this was okay. And here we sit. And this was a train company. So just imagine if this was somebody on a higher level. This is just a train company. They did what they wanted. So I, and you know what? The Republican governor of Ohio knew it. The Democratic governor of Pennsylvania knew it. The EPA, a bunch of stinking bureaucrats knew it. The Department of Transportation knew it. Buttigieg finally goes down there and does this. Yeah. You mentioned a national political figure who's decided to get involved. It sounds like you're talking about Trump. And then you said, I need your help. How can he help? Well, one thing he could do is uh, uh, express support for reversing the deregulation uh, that uh, happened on his watch. I heard him say he had nothing to do with it, even though it was in his administration. Uh, so if he had nothing to do with it and uh, they did it in his administration against his will, uh, maybe he could come out and say that uh, uh, that uh, he supports us moving in a different direction. Uh, we're not afraid to own our policies when it comes to raising the bar on regulation. And uh, I've got to think that uh, uh, him indicating that this is uh, something that everybody, no matter how much you disagree on politics and presidential campaigns, can get behind. Higher fines, tougher uh, uh, regulations on safety, Congress unti untying our hands on breaking rules. All the other things that go with that. Uh, hey, Pete, Pete, why don't you get it again? done? You've been there for two years. Now, here's the thing about that Trump and the braking system. The braking system only goes on long trains that have more than 20 volatile wagons on it, right? Mm -hmm. this, this would not have qualified for such a designation. Mm -hmm. Pete, this is why cars go off the tracks. You know those railroad ties, the, the, mm -hmm. the pieces of wood that the, the, the rails are the nailed stakes. to? Mm -hmm. Mostly, the, the spikes come out and the rails pop off. That's what causes most of it. It's the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. The other reason is, and I noticed from riding the boxcars, is the wheels don't stay round. They, when you brake, they'll, they'll get a flat spot in them. And when you get a flat spot, they start going like this. Bam, ba bam, ba bam, ba bam, ba bam, ba bam. And we're all from Michigan, so we know what happens when your rear end goes bam, ba bam, ba bam. Break the road. The bearings in your wheel mm -hmm. hub 
your wheel bearings start to smoke and f it sees, right? That's what you heard from the neighbors, the videotape, the, the, the wheels were smoking. So the railroad isn't maintaining. You're supposed to grind those things back into a circle. Costs a lot of fucking money. And so they're just going to dump shit and burn it and then dump it up here? So all of this is just negligence at every level. Fucking right. I mean, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about negligence of an infrastructure from DTE. We're talking about negligence of a infrastructure at the transportation. We're talking just overall negligence. Smart And who has to suffer it. from that? We negligence. do. Yeah. And then so you know. That, so when I said we need to have conversations, I don't mean just them having conversations. The community needs to start rallying together and having these having conversations with full transparency so that they can understand the people up here can understand what the people down here, however they want to see how it's supposed to go. It's how what's happening for real and how we're being affected. I don't because think they what care. If, you mean you don't you mean I this? I think they care. You mean no, I think they do, but you mean Well, they'll care if if every Detroit resident was to move out of the city. Well, no, yeah. they they don't care enough to do shit. Like Someone turn off the porno, turn off the <laughs> NFL, right? Turn off Twitter and your Xbox. Just just do what Jasmine's doing. Just look at how much a dude made. Yeah, Find true. out when the next meeting is and go. And let him have and it. And go. I had someone text me the other day and they they're so frustrated with the power and I'm like, "I can't do anything." Oh, but I can. I can help amplify these silent voices. She mm -hmm. said, I'm too old to be dealing with this. In a minute, I'm going to pack my bags up and leave Michigan. We don't we don't want people to leave Michigan because we need their dollars to help. Well, but everybody can't do that either. A lot of people, not everybody, not everybody stayed. Some people are stuck. And those people that are stuck are entitled to you know what you know those Absolutely. basic services We're, and what they pay for well, my we, point we, is we, we got, don't want that to happen we got a bigger problem i think which is the division here so like if you just see what some people are like tweet at social media or that's what we do now mm -hmm. you you know so, some guy did this on twitter i'm looking at that looking for pete's mm -hmm. i don't have cable so i'm looking for pete's stop off in east palestine you know war crime central and some guys like you tell him pete you know like all right you want to know about trump yeah, Amtrak went off the train, the braking system, people died, he didn't show up. That's right, tweet that. He's out! We got rid of him! He's out! Now we got the new guy. Mm -hmm. All right, hey, Pete. This guy says, you give it to a Pete, you really tell him that orange Cheeto motherfucker. And I'm, I'm thinking, dude, you're letting him off. You're, you're picking sides and not our side. So that dude, whoever tweeted that, he should be penalized five years, no vote for excessive fanboyery. <laughs> like, you're out. Fanboying. There's, there's but, but, no excuse. But it is, Charlie, and that's what happens, too. Everybody is looking for a side to pick and to choose. There are no more sides now. There shouldn't be. We don't, we, yep. we need to work together. Yeah. We can't move forward and have growth in our community. First of all, it's not just about me or you or you. We got babies that are coming up behind us. Mm -hmm. And what? senior citizens. Like yeah, the and lady senior citizens. Talked about. Yeah. I, my concern goes to the mother who just brought her child home from the hospital mm -hmm. and had to sit without power. Exactly. Yep. It's not just about us anymore. So let's do this. Like, what? Look at this division. Okay, here's a bunch of like worn out run down broke ass white people in rural ohio and there's a bunch of run down wore out black people here in southern michigan mm -hmm. and you poison them and then you're going to bring that shit over here to us yep. what's with the division like we got all this shit in common that they're doing to us this is our people like they're being played That's true. And, and you gotta wake yourself up Phosgene, it's illegal, Mark. Okay, so where's the EPA? Let me give you another one. The EPA knew this. Mm -hmm. They knew they were gonna light it on fire. They're the ones going in there telling you, hey, oh, the air's fine, mm -hmm. right? Then they bring in the University of <laughs> uh, uh, Texas A&M. It's not fine, right? The EPA, huh, where are they? Oh, they must be in Flint, didn't they? Weren't they uh, telling us all yeah. yep, oh, that water, water was, was good? Yep, sure then we had to bring in the university, and it wasn't bureaucrats. Here's what I would like to see. See, governor and governor and governor and Pete and president. I want some asses fired. 
Yep. I want the government to know how to go. I trusted these fuckers to Google what happens when you light off a vinyl chloride and I find out it's a World War I death machine. But aren't these engineers? Aren't these hazmat you're, specialists? You're fired. You're fired. Accountability is a big part of a lot of this. The yeah. biggest like employer in the world is the United States federal government. Yep. And we got, we got so many layers of this. And you're all sitting around on your ass collecting a check. Same yep. with the demolition. I want that. I'm not giving up on that. Like, if the governor came out and goes, these, these dipshits handed me this. It's my fault. I signed it. I signed off on it. Mm -hmm. I told you to move because it was going to be deadly. That's why he doesn't have anything to say because I, I, I read what he, you know, I watched his press conference. Move, it's deadly. Mm -hmm. That's what Mike DeWine, Republican governor of Ohio, told the people. It's deadly. We don't know what will happen. You let him do that? But Charlie, are they were they able or how are they able to decide to pick this stuff up and bring it to Michigan? Thank you. Somebody somewhere had to know. Like you just I mean, illegal dumping, whether it's tires or trash, you know, is illegal. Right. So how do you pick up a whole thing? They just decide I'm gonna bring, bring it, bring it to, to a Michigan different and state just and just it. dump it. Like somebody And even had if to know. no one knew, now we do know. Okay. But somebody had Hold on. to know. Th that's cool. Okay, so I just wrote a note here okay. for the reporter. Mm -hmm. It says, find out. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was going to get an assignment while we, I was here. <laughs> we would like to know, Governor, did you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah. you know in the end this is where it's going. It's got to go somewhere. Where it does the book it should go to the state cool. capitol in Ohio. I, I just want to say this, though. I mean, it is important to find out who know, but I think the bigger point is is that we already know these people know and don't mm -hmm. give a damn. They don't. They already know we but got. But they're allowed to not care anymore, um, Red. And I think, again, like Jasmine said, people are looking for something to do. Is that first thing going to that meeting? You know, is that first thing flooding, you know, a Dana Nessel's office? I mean, putting that pressure on them because they respond to public scrutiny. They do. And so I can't help but to think that you'd have a heightened level of scrutiny, but then you got to stick with it. Right. We can't say something one day and then let it trail off like the media coverage of the Michigan State Judy. It just kind of goes Thank away. Thank you. Michigan, you, you see the theme because we try to give a good program here. There is a theme here to the incompetence of the people that we hire yeah. to keep track of our welfare. Makes me feel like we're being ran by boobs and income poops. What a terrible generation we are. <laughs> we just just collect a check and I'll be gone but Charles, by the time them babies come up. Listen, I tweeted today. Pay attention Ooh, to the position. Let me check. To the position to the opinions <laughs> of people. How many hits you get? Because I don't know. I didn't listen. I didn't I look. hope it's viral. Let but it's not. But I was just saying that, you know, when people are giving you explanations or, you know, definitions or updates those paychecks are driving what that person is saying. You know, Jasmine, we talked about that the other day when somebody from DTE was saying, oh, but no, we do all this stuff. Yeah, but that's a that's a subjective opinion when that person is paid by that company. Right. Would their mm -hmm. opinion be the same if they if, got let go the next day? If they were not an employee of that company, that that that's, that oh. speaks volumes. Oh, yeah. let me give you, I, I forgot. In, yeah, go ahead, sir. Instead okay. of us, Instead of us using the incentive of our paycheck, which don't get me mm -hmm. wrong, you know, I need my paycheck, Detroit Free Press. So instead of us using the incentive of our paychecks to further a narrative that is not conducive for the majority, why don't we use the incentive of our paychecks to start speaking up so that we can help change this? So think you're because they got because no. you know why too many instances they use those people that they pay to protect and cover up what they're doing and what they're not doing. Okay, that's 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 very nice. That's good. We we got that. It's important to say here that the free press is now offering a special where you it's a, a dollar a month for a year, is that correct? <laughs> and the Detroit News, Charlie, we yeah, write for I'm, the news. I'm, I was going to get there, right? A dollar a month for a year, is that correct? Yes, it yeah. is. So, uh, we work for the news. Just Do what you just said. Dollar a like, month. Look at what we're doing. We're coming together. Two yeah. publications are coming together in a sense and we're uplifting these concerns because that our people community deserve people to have. Know. We're using well, our, our paycheck I'm doing. Incentives. I'm giving facts. Yeah. That is a dollar. Here's another fact. <laughs> that 35,000 tons a phosgene was ex was manufactured during World War One. Mm. In Ohio, they ripped off about six hundred tons of phosgene, meaning 
That's about 2%. Just in one little town in one day, 2% of the total of World War I. That's what they did. So this, mm. this soil kind of up here is fucked up. Wow. So pay attention. Now, this nursing home segment that we're, see that nice segue? Mm. It's brought to you by Legacy Partners Insurance. Because I've been telling you about how they can help you with Medicare. Eh? Remember? And now I'm going to tell you how they save you money on all your stuff. Your house. Your, you know, if, what happens if, Something arcs because of the shitty power executives and your house burns down and they refuse, refuse to accept mm -hmm. responsibility. You need good homeowners insurance mm -hmm. you, and you don't want to pay top dollar. They shop for you. Have, write the legacy part. You have a home? Um, yes. <laughs> okay. Here, write this down. Legacy partners, 586-20. Oh, I got it. You got it? Yeah, I got it. You already got legacy yeah, partners? Yeah, it came right up. Yeah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Call them. Okay. What's our guy's name over there? Alex. 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 As for Alex, he'll get back okay. to you today. Okay. And you know what? No charge. And if you've got the best thing, he's not going to push you into something else. He's unbelievable. They save me money. They save Mark money. Red found out like, you know, he's getting a good deal. So he's there. Have you called him? Yeah, I talked to him. They, I told you, they they reached out to me, actually. Uh, but I found out that, you know, I was already in a good place. So already. In, did they did they pressure you to? No, no. They, they told you you're in a good They're place. Just like this is what you have. This works. I mean, yeah, it was fine. Uh, I mean, but you can't you can't help but do comparative shopping for whatever it is that you're doing. And insurance is excessively high for us in the city of Detroit. Right. Exactly. So we deserve at least to try to figure out how to get the maximum for the minimum. So what did I tell everybody today? This is true. I really believe this. I believe in this company. Check them. They can save you money. Hall, they work hard for you and they get it done fast and they are highly respected. And if you do save money, don't just put it in a mattress. Luke Nowacki talks to old ladies. He does pension funds. He talked to my mother. He does me. I, I believe in these people. Mm -hmm. So what I'm telling you, give it a try. All right, now. Nestle, Whitmer, there's a new nursing home study that came out from the feds this time. The, according to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, they cover only nursing homes that get Medicare and Medicaid. So okay. when we talk uh, mm -hmm. adult foster care, right. and assisted, it's not them. It's about 450 mm -hmm. very particular Institutions they, they get federal dollars. Okay. That Michigan violated the COVID-19 vaccination mandates more than any other state for these mm. nursing homes. In fact, 10% of all nursing homes cited in the United States are here in Michigan. And 15% wow. of the hospitals across the entire United States are here in Michigan. Mm. So what does that mean? That means your staff didn't get vaccinated when they were supposed to. Or if they didn't get vaccinated, they didn't have an excuse or a doctor's note. And you didn't give them masks and equipment and they were walking around infecting old people. And cross-contamination. That's exact. So they just hit us. They, you knew, Governor. And Madam Attorney General, you knew because I told you. Because it was all over the country. I told you. We had porters on. Remember him? Mm -hmm. Kevin? Yeah, we had doctors on. We had nurses on. We had engineers. This is an outrage because I agreed with, and you're not gonna like me some of you out there because I know your heart's broken, that you couldn't go into the nursing home mm -hmm. because we didn't know what to do. Right. We wanted to keep them safe, right? So we were the last ones to require testing of our staff. We were the last ones to give them equipment. Obviously, even when we had it, they weren't doing it. Nobody was looking. And what does is, what is Madam Nestle say? She goes to HCAM, the lobbying wing for the nursing homes, and says, I think it's outrageous. They said you did, did a bad job. I think, I think you did great. <laughs> it's the paycheck at the, talking. To the keynote speaker at the breakfast. Like, <laughs> this, this is a crime. That's the paycheck talking. That's a crime. 66 nursing homes didn't follow the protocol. Mm -hmm. They didn't inspect them during COVID. They didn't inspect them prior to COVID. They that didn't count the issue. dead. Yeah. And we all just went along. And the level of cross-contamination is always the thing that I think about from the people that we talk to. Mm -hmm. well, you know, people that they knew that were sick or compromised. And, you know, they had no problem intermingling or not separating them. Facts. Studies. 
I mean, I do remember reports. Report. No, Assignment. you know, reports yeah. like you know, uh, uh, Wall Street reports, Center for Medicaid and Medicaid Services. You know what I mean? The EPA. Mm -hmm. These are fat. We're not just bullshitting over mm -hmm. here. But what we're what we're doing is like, what do we do? Uh, you guys just stumped it with the big question. What do we do? I don't. I don't know. What because that's what everybody wants to know. That's what. It, that's the question. Yeah. That, that's the. What do we? What do? do we do? I know what you do. Share, share, share. <laughs> you know, give us a like, subscribe. You can find us on YouTube. Okay. But I, I do agree whether it's the meeting, whether it's calling somebody, whether it's saying something, but it also has to be a cohesive effort. It can't be the division that you talked about. It can't exactly. be the us versus them. It's got to be, all right, maybe like for me, maybe it didn't impact me because I had a generator, but right. I'm still concerned about the impact that it has on other people. I mean, because I care about I care. That's you know, I just luckily didn't lose my power this yeah. time. And so and, yeah, it, I, didn't I, I didn't I'm not in I that either, yeah. that oh. equation. But I know a lot of people that have and it's it's unfortunate. You know, that's funny. Mm -hmm. I'm pissed I didn't lose my power. <laughs> I'm always the guy that loses his power and I went went and bought a big fucking generator. You know, I'm a dude. I like my tools. <laughs> I got it already in the garage. Like, come on, the pot the pot didn't go out. That's why I called my mom. I got a big generator, and she didn't call me. She didn't want it. Yeah, but that's the thing, though. You know, you know but what, can people yeah. even afford generators, though? Right. Well, I, that, I that's that. another but, conversation. But, 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 you got, no. but you got two kinds. You you have portable generators, which a lot of people use incorrectly, and it compromises. Do not their put safety. them in your basement. Don't put them in your basement. They catch fire, or you get uh, carbon monoxide, all that. And you have the permanent ones, which are expensive. So again, but people shouldn't have to do that. But people, so another thing. Like we I, don't live in the third world country. Someone told me that people should invest in generators, right? If they can. I would. Yeah. That right there, mm -hmm. if they can. Because the average American doesn't have an emergency savings account. That's true. So, That's true. so if you do, when you lose power in the middle of the week, where are you going to get the generators? Are here's expensive. what you do. Tell you you got to refi that house. <laughs> no, Charlie. <laughs> okay. Consol <laughs> Consolidate the credit card debt. Get a lower note. Take the $500. Now you have Cash it. Cash out if some you, of your 401. If, if you call Hall, you can get this done. And then you go see Luke Nowacki and he'll take care of your little nest thing. This is actually solutions. But after a while, you get to, I remember it was maybe a couple summers ago, the power was out for no apparent oh, you, reason. You, you ladies keep wanting to do the power. We're gonna, the power's okay, back Okay, we don't out. want to talk about the power. Then no, no, we do. But we, we're doing COVID in the nursing home. Okay, oh, we're back. COVID. Okay. All right. Okay. No, wait What about the power in the nursing so, homes? So here's another one. <laughs> have they, oh, they probably have generators. Write this down, reporter. Here's another okay. one. Okay, I got another How one. How many billions did Washington send us for COVID, right? Lots, like, like 12 billion, 13 billion, right? Mm -hmm. All that billions. We're but it at, was delayed. Okay, it's still Significantly. Significantly, right there. You can take that to the bank. That's the free press right there. That's a, <laughs> that's a Pulitzer in the, in the works right there. Significantly delayed. How much of this went to new HVAC heating and cooling systems, zero pressure, on top of nursing homes. So like when you breathe and it's not circulating around the nursing home, that'd be like a million dollars a nursing home. That's $450 million dropping that buck. How many got it? That's a good question. I don't think any, but it's good. Check your note. While Look, you're calling find the, out. While That's you're calling the governor, question. right? Well, well I just want to bring this up for those that forgot during the pandemic, we had nurses assisting on the show inside we had a head chief nurses head, dude uh, yeah that were telling us hey they putting curtains up mm -hmm. the I ward is split by a curtain they're Rem not remember sanitizing. i went into the nurse yes. i went into mm -hmm. one of these facilities and you went with the guy who was picking up the bodies exactly. remember that i remember that you we did went that into report. one of the hubs. i have a, i had friends at the time that were working in the facilities and I, I before i became a journalist i worked in the hospital so i know what protective gear looks like and they were not properly protected. No. I, 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 cause I was like, what kind of mask are you wearing? You know, I had to wear an N95 when someone had um, a respiratory uh, infection or something like that to enter a room. They were wearing surgical masks. Yeah. I and mean, not surgical. They were wearing the blue. They said that we, could, we yeah. couldn't find them. Well, how come I could find them and I'm delivering them to the jails and I'm delivering them to the nurses? Why could I find them? And the excuse was we can't find it because it was bullshit. And I'll tell you what else is bullshit. This is interesting. This is COVID news. This is divisiveness. This is buying into your political tribe. Watch. 
Here's what cracked yesterday, Wall Street Journal and then the New York Times, that the United States Energy Department, which oversees a bunch of biological laboratories, so it's mm -hmm. important, now believes, and these are according to sources inside, this is top secret, we don't know who said it, you know, the, people, the reporters from the Times and the Journal, you know how it goes. Okay, they both verified it. The Energy Department now believes that COVID most likely came from a, the lab in Wuhan. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I just read about that. As does the FBI, okay? I don't know if you can take this to the bank. Times said they had low certainty. Low certainty means we have certainty. Mm -hmm. It's low. Don't take it to the bank. Yeah, let's, they're not confirming let's, it. Still. Right. Let's not cause they're World War III. They're putting it out there, but they're not confirming it. Right. FBI's also come out with that. Mm -hmm. There are four other agencies that believe it, it the, you know, farmer's market bat theory. Mm -hmm. and, COVID came from somewhere. And, well, yeah. And, and two are uncertain. The point being, U.S. Department of Energy is no joke. FBI's no joke. I don't know who these four other agencies are, but I'm, I'm sure they're no joke. The point being, it was unfair and it was ridiculous if we look back that rational thinkers me, you, John Stewart. Oh, <laughs> oh, there's a virus that came from Wuhan and there's a building that says Wuhan Institute of Virology. Could could be something there, right? So why was everybody called a kook or a conspiracy mm -hmm. theorist when like it was a rational thought? But that's what happens when people say something that and if they have a different perspective or opinion that that's we hear politically scientifically economically if somebody says something that they disagree with then they're a nut or it's fake news or they're conspiracy theorists i mean that's just the us versus them it's just another level that's of it. what's happening and, yeah. and so that you're, you're already doing your part jasmine mm -hmm. what do we do i know what you're doing you decided to conduct your life in a way where you're going to make people aware of things. I don't know what more you could do. That's got to be enough. It's, it's going to drive you to drink. <laughs> Trust me, I, I've been there and, I, you know, I'm sober now. <laughs> Today. I got my chip. Since yesterday. <laughs> I think it just comes down to. I got my 12-hour to... chip. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a start. <laughs> What it, you comes, saying, it comes down to having more conversations like this. It comes down to actually not care, actually caring about the work that you're doing and using your platform to benefit the, the communities that you serve. Um, without my community, without serving my community, I wouldn't have a job, mm -hmm. you know? So it, it just, I don't know what more else and we can every do. elected official ought to feel that same way because without the community they wouldn't have a job. Yeah. And it is it is public service, not self service. And that yeah. line has also been blurred. And let's put this where it's at. Let's get back to the Wuhan and all that. Here. If you really want to know the answer, it doesn't matter where you're at on that. I'd never seen a disease be so politicized like this one. Mm -hmm. The Chinese, this is I'm just a quote out of the, you know, New York Times. We may never get to the answer because the Chinese government won't allow more testing. How outrageous are they? Don't we all want to know the answer? That that leads me as a reporter. Okay, just like Lansing leads me as a reporter. Why won't mm -hmm. you tell me? Why wouldn't you let what us in? Why are you human family? Mm. Mm. Okay, uh, that's it for today. I want to remind you, March 18th at the Andiamo showroom. An evening with white boy Rick, and I'm asking the questions. Have you got your ticket yet? No. <laughs> yeah, you go to AndiamoShowroom.com or Ticketmaster. There's a few left. It's going to be awesome. White boy Rick, unfiltered. We'll see, maybe. Perhaps. I don't, I don't, maybe maybe he'll get so mad at me, beat me up. He's a big dude. He's a big dude. He's too old to fight you, Charlie. <laughs> that motherfucker at 33 in the can. He knows how to fight. <laughs> that guy carries a sharp toothbrush in his boot. You know he does. He's going to shake you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's good to see you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. That's Jasmine Barmore from the Detroit Free Press. That's Karen Dumas from Detroit News and No Bullshit News Hour. I'm going to be in New York on Thursday with my BFF. Oh, that is, don't you? Chris Cuomo, that's right. Got some cocktails. Nope, I'm sober. Hey Tucker, you hear that?
got a new BFF.